in a less morally murky time, it was called war profiteering. Cutting corners, padding contracts, stealing. Businesses can make more money while American soldiers were shortchanged, undermined, undersupplied, their life and limb put at risk as a result. In our third story in the countdown, a senator named Harry Truman made a name for himself investigating just such misconduct during World War II. General Marshall later told him that his committee was worth two divisions to the war effort. Back then, war profiteers were run out of town. Today, it appears they run the town. Senator Byron Dorgan has been trying to change that. At a Democratic hearing yesterday, his panel released a document showing how far Halliburton's subsidiary, KBR, one of the biggest military contractors, has been willing to go. One of its truckers who survived the convoy massacre in Iraq was sent a KBR form to sign that said, in quote, uh, in consideration for the application for a Defense of Freedom, Freedom Medal, I hereby release, acquit, and discharge KBR with respect to and from any and all claims I may have against any of them. In layman's terms, promise not to sue us, then you get your government medal. It made KBR Halliburton our worst persons in the world yesterday, but it, that's a mild outrage compared to some of what else goes on in the field. Documentary filmmaker Robert Greenwald has been chronicling the human toll of corporate war profiteering. His new film is called Iraq for Sale, The War Profiteers. It's just played at uh, select screenings around the country. You can order it now at IraqForSale.org. Mr. Greenwald, good evening. Good evening. As you point out in the film, never have so many military functions been turned over to private companies. We already know it's made it more and not less expensive, but does it have any direct effect on people in the military? It's actually having quite a terrible effect of people in the military. These profiteers, these corporations that are making millions and billions are hurting the morale because one thing we never think about, and I didn't realize till I started working on the film, military is working right next to somebody who's getting paid three and four times the amount to do the exact same job. And that's devastating to the troops, the men and women in the army, and how they are trying to do their job and yet see these private folks getting more and more money because the corporations are profiting as a result of that. We all know that the uh, what the word SNAFU is an acronym for and that it originated uh, in military service um, we'll, we'll say all fouled up rather than the other version of it but when you add business to the equation of war uh, let me play a clip from the film a former Halliburton employee speaking to you testifying about contaminated water in Iraq. I'll get your reaction. And I tried to notify the troops that they may be exposed to a serious health risk. I was told that the military was none of my concern. They were only concerned with making their profit and didn't care how it may affect the troops. Of the 67 water treatment plants that Halliburton run, 63 of them weren't providing safe water. And the Marines are showering in it every single day. Sorry. I was there to help them. How is it that giving U.S. Marines tainted water does not kill a company dead, let alone stop uh, the stream of Pentagon contracts that they continue to get? I, I don't. It's quite shocking, actually. Halliburton is being protected at the highest levels of government. They are paying lobbyists huge amounts of money. They're giving campaign contributions. They're hiring former high-level military people. But David Lazar has made over a hundred million dollars, the head of Halliburton, since this war began. That is an obscenity. That should not be allowed to go on, and it should be illegal. You mentioned him. You mentioned the uh, the lobbyist. Give me some specifics, uh, the connections that the companies have politically. Well, what they do is, you know, it's a, these companies are spend a lot of time and money on this. So what they do is they hire former legislators, they hire people who've been in the government, and then they hire military folks at very high levels. So that when the investigations come, this kind of network protects them against what should be happening, which is people should be brought before commissions, people should be accused and told they are breaking the law, and most importantly, look, there's a limited amount of money. And if it's going into the corporation's pocket, then it's not going to the soldiers, it's not going to the Iraqi people, 
And here's the ultimate tragedy. All of us are less safe because that money, hospitals don't get built, water doesn't get cleaned up, and the Americans and the Iraqis pay a price for these guys making this obscene amounts of profits. The head of Kaki, who supplied interrogators at Abu Ghraib, interrogators who were torturing for profit, he made $20 million. Uh, last point on this, we hear a lot towards the fall elections. Uh, Democratic investigations, what the, what that will do to the country, a lot of scare tactics from the from the party in power currently. If the Democrats did take over Congress or at least the House, what would change in terms of war profiteers, if anything? Well, Henry Waxman, who's been an absolute hero on this issue, would have subpoena powers. He would call people before him, and he would get to the bottom of it. That's what you do in a democracy. You investigate and you find out where there's corruption, you find out where there's profiteering, and you make sure there's hell to pay for it, and that people go to jail for it, and that if laws have been broken, there are consequences. Right now, there are absolutely no consequences for these profiteers who are acting in a treasonous fashion. As Harry Truman did, uh, a Democrat during a Democratic administration. Absolutely. Robert Greenwald, the uh, documentary is Iraq for Sale. We thank you for your time tonight, sir. Thank you.